Hey, Rose Viz, Janie Finlay here with my great friend and mentor, Tim O'Neill. I've been watching quite a bit of content online and this morning I saw a beautiful share from Tim around leadership and I just wanted to have the opportunity to share that with you. So, Tim, thanks for joining me first. How are you doing? And can you talk me through the leadership ideas that you were talking about this morning? Yeah, sure, Janie. Look, I'm, I'm actually doing doing pretty well, thanks. And here at Tail Race, I think, um, you know, unfortunately we had to let go of quite a few staff, but their attitude was fantastic. And the core staff that we've actually held on to, um, they've all taken uh, pay cuts, uh, substantial pay cuts, uh, just to see us through this time. And we're busy still, and I just, could, I just admire their attitude. Uh, Janie, what I was talking about earlier uh, this morning uh, was that the leader, a leader has to make changes. A leader has to make decisions. And that's part of the role of a leader. You could say that a leader is a broker in change. Uh, unfortunately, not always uh, do people like change. I have a saying that most people don't mind change at all as long as it doesn't affect themselves. Uh, and so the leaders, leaders, because they tend to be change junkies, that's why they're leaders, they're always looking out there for what decisions to make. But there's a problem, and that is that if you can imagine a rubber band, a leader has to be pulling the rubber band, which creates a tension, and so people hopefully will follow along behind, definitely be away behind. And that can be because of them not knowing all the details or uh, can be personality type as well. Some people uh, are more followers and leaders. They respond to change rather than initiate change. And so leaders have to be very, very careful that as they're going out, making change and creating a tension for change so they don't snap the rubber band. Because yes. as soon as you snap the rubber band, you leave people behind and people get hurt, they get damaged, your organisation gets damaged. Now, in the case of a, of a business, the currency that leaders generally uh, use is their position and the pay that they provide. And that gives them the, the right to lead because, quite simply, if you don't follow, you don't necessarily get paid or get a job. But there are other organisations in our society where it's very, very different. For example, sporting clubs or churches like here at Tail Race, where uh, we have volunteers and we have people who contribute in different ways without being on the payroll. And so for those people, we have to uh, go through many more steps of the decision-making process to help people process change so that they're not left behind and disenfranchised. Some people may be familiar with what's called a bell curve. And uh, the bell curve is often used to describe people's propensity to change. Uh, people on one hand, on the, this side of the bell curve, tend to be those who are early adopters and that they find change relatively easy. People on the other end of the bell curve, they find change really, really hard. And we call those people anchors because it takes a lot to get them to change. But most people are right in the middle. And so it's the people in the middle in particular that a leader needs to utilise the skill to actually bring about change. Yeah, fantastic. And as you're talking about that rubber band and you're talking about uh, community organisations, I suppose at the moment that's a little bit like the Tasmanian community, that our Premier Peter Gutwin, who is doing an incredible, incredible job um, providing clarity and leading with conviction and having so much compassion right now for us, He's bringing really a, a community organisation, a population of Tasmanians along with him. And as you said, um, you've, you've got to be able to influence and bring people along in the right way. And I love the rubber band analogy. Um, we were just talking this morning a little bit about trust in leadership as well. For people to keep holding on to the end of that rubber band and choosing not to let go, it's about building that trust. And I feel like in the Tasmanian community right now, we're really trusting and getting behind uh, Peter and everybody else that's working to take us through this extraordinary. Yeah. So. Yep. That's that's so. Um, at this time, a pain in the community. So I just got to say that at this time, there's a lot of pain in the community, a lot of sadness, a lot mm -hmm. of uncertainty. Have you got any sort of words of wisdom to help people feel a bit more calm with where they're at right now? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, two things that come to mind. One is the fact that we have to be very careful that we don't get overwhelmed with all the information that's coming through. Now, we have to listen very carefully to the, to the uh, requirements that both the federal and the state government are putting down. For example, the social distancing, and we have to make sure that we uh, abide by those. 
But at the same time, if we're trying, say if we're a business person or a leader in some context, trying to strategize about next steps, we have to be really careful that we don't uh, try and make our plans one day and then the next and then the next and then the next. Because when, what we, the, when the plans that we made on Monday are no longer relevant because of changes that, that happen on Tuesday, we end up struggling to cope with this. And the term that I use is that we milkshake our brain. It's like shaking up our brain and having all of these bubbles flowing through it. And that just, uh, it, that just disables us emotionally. So what I'd encourage people there to do is to minimise the amount of time that they're looking at the news and the, the social media. And if you need to be developing strategy where most business people and, and organisational leaders will need to be doing this, review that, say, every Monday rather than trying to review it every day so that the plans that you make on Tuesday don't have to be changed by Wednesday. So that way you can yeah. and see that the whole flow of the changes and make, make decisions that way. If I can just want, add one other uh, thought too, and that is that uh, we need to be real about the grief that we're actually facing, the, uh, the loss, uh, the grieving that's actually going on, and we need to be prepared to open up and to, to, to face those anxieties because it's not until we face those anxieties and grief that we can actually move beyond that to a place of peace. Yeah, fantastic. Look, I, I, I'm really grateful that you were able to be in a position today to share that. Um, I know in the Facebook group that I was in this morning, there's a small but really important community there. And to be able to share that with the greater public, your comments about leadership, your comments about um, not getting into that milkshake mind, but most importantly, acknowledging those feelings, which for many are going to be diverse and, and for some new right now. Some yeah. people will not have had these emotions and these feelings before. Um, so can I say thank you so much uh, for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for um, the messages that you're continuing to share and to you and to your family and to community, take care and stay safe. Okay, thanks, Joni. Bless you too. Bye.